Has a man ever said or acted like he cares about you, but won't commit? And this happens because men know these days, men know if they act like they care or even say that they can care, care about you, they can get companionship from you, they can get connection, and they can get sex without any little, little or no commitment, they can excuse get me. Companionship okay. From you. Okay, so with that said, the dating marketplace doesn't favor women. Now, a lot of the people in the red, kil red pill community will say it does favor women. Well, certainly women hold the cards when it comes to sex, but at the end of the day, men hold the cards when it comes to commitment. That's right, men hold the cards. And given that these days, what did I say in my notes? I said, there's no need for a man to commit because sex is free. Sex is free. So this begs the question, how do you differentiate the, between the men who are going to use you versus those men who genuinely want a serious full commitment? Okay, because the reality is, is men, sadly, these days, a significant percentage of men, not all men, not all men will use you. In fact, many men won't even intentionally use you. That's right, most men won't intentionally use you. They do it by, def not default, by, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm stumbled here, not by accident, but it's because men are just as equally confused in the dating marketplace. Now, let me be clear about the men I'm talking about. I'm talking about men in the over 40 category, which roughly about 75% of singles over 45 years old are divorced. And men who go through a divorce, just like women who go through divorce, are oftentimes incredibly confused as to what they're looking for in a, in a relationship. That's right, they're confused. In fact, many men in particular might have been so burned in their previous relationship or their previous marriage that they are actually gun shy. So what happens is human beings want companionship, they want connection, they want sex, and yet they don't recognize that commitment is the real value in a relationship. And yet couples these days spend so little time developing the two most important ingredients for a healthy, happy relationship, and that's trust and commitment. That's right, trust and commitment. Because humans don't really know how to get to know one another. Now let me explain what I mean by getting to know one another. So I wanna tell you a quick story about a woman who reached out to me for coaching. She had been in a relationship for three years. It was a long distance relationship. It was about a 200 mile drive. So it wasn't flying, it was driving. And they did it for three years. And when they finally agreed that they would move in together with the intent of getting married, okay? In fact, they, she had to disrupt her family. She had to go through family court just to be able to take her children with her because she was so in love with this man who she saw every other week for a weekend, mostly she drove out to him. And they were in this bubble relationship, as I'll talk about in a moment, that when she finally moved in with them, within six months, they broke up. Think about it, a three-year relationship, and when she finally, when they finally declared their love, they're gonna move in together, within six months, they broke up. Why? Because she really didn't know this person until she began living with him. That's right, you really don't know a person and today's dating marketplace really doesn't emphasize how to get to know another human being. We really don't, we, we have a very passive way of approaching it and these days I've often said that dating is just a very long strung out version of friends with benefits. That's how you're being used. In other words, you're getting the benefit of some companionship, you're getting benefit of some connection, you're getting the benefit of sex without any real commitment if it's a long drawn out process. Now, some men will say to you, oh, it takes me a long time to get to know a person. It takes me a long time to get to know a person. You know what's fascinating to me? You ask anybody or you ask any man who's absolutely in love with his partner. He's absolutely in love with his partner. He demonstrates that he's in love with her. He will tell you that he knew very early on that she was the one. Now, I don't like emphasizing the term she's the one, but I mean, he knew very early on that he wanted to commit to her. She was the one he wanted to commit to. 
It didn't take him years to figure that out. He actually knew it very quickly. And while their process to maybe full commitment of either moving in together or getting married might have taken a while, he was fully engaged in the process. And ladies, if you find yourself in a relationship with a man who's not fully engaged in the process, then you might find yourself being used by a guy. And you know what's interesting? I was reading the book. Um, there's a, there's a, in the book, where is it? How to be in a grown up in a relationship. One of the therapists goes on to say people stay in miserable relationships because the fear of leaving is more painful than the, than the fear of not getting what you want, not getting, not getting the, what your needs met. And it's not so much the fear of not getting your needs met. In other words, the fear of leaving so outweighs the fact that you're not getting your needs met. And many of you fall for these relationships where you're being used. And remember I said earlier, men aren't doing this intentionally. They're just rather unconscious to this because the men who say, I need to take it slow, the men who say, I'm not ready for a serious relationship, well, then they haven't contemplated how much it hurts another human being to be ambivalent. Think about that. They haven't, men haven't contemplated how much it hurts another person, even if they're completely forthright. I know men, and I've done this myself. I've been very upfront with women. I said, look, I like you, okay? But I don't wanna commit to you. And it fascinates me how many of these women would keep coming back for more. And I'm like, it was just sex, okay? Now, I wasn't blatant at that, but I was literally saying, I don't want to commit to you. It doesn't feel like the right relationship. But they would keep trying more, trying harder to convince me. Ladies, you don't need to chase men. If a man isn't interested, it's time for you to move on. So I'm going to share with you the seven things that men say or do. And by the way, while the title says shocking things, quite frankly, these are the most obvious things on the planet. And you, some people just need to be hit over the head over and over and over again so they actually sinks in. It's one of the reasons why I repeat myself so frequently. So the number one is your time together is mostly about sex. That's obvious. As I said before, you might be the gatekeepers of sex. In other words, you hold the cards when sex, but the minute you have sex, the guy holds the cards of commitment. And I'm here to encourage you at least get some level of commitment before you're physically intimate with them. Get some agreement of monogamy, get some agreement of exclusivity. It's why I created my dating vows. And by the way, I'll put the link up here for the dating vows. Where is that? Right here. And there's a link in the below. Get some level of commitment. Now, someone wrote to me, this is ludicrous trying to get this commitment from a guy. And yet, isn't it fascinating? Two people will have sex together with little or no agreements to one another. And the, the dating vows is simply, I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent of declaring something serious in the next three to six months. It's, you're both agreeing to this. I agree to be monogamous sexually while we have regular sex together. I agree not to actively seek to meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our dating profiles if that's where you met. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, and disappearing. I'm a big proponent of doing check-ins with each other on a regular basis. And I agree to invest regular in the time in the process of getting to know you, which looks like we spend two, three, four days, nights, a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life. That is your that's a suggested standard you might want to have. Now, 90% of guys will bail on this because these are the men who don't know what they want. By the way, everybody is clear on what they, what they don't want. You know, it's fascinating to me. Everybody is clear on what they don't want, okay? But what they are not clear as to what they do want. I have women come to me for coaching. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me and the links in the show notes as well. It fascinates me how few women think they know what they want. They all know what they don't want. Everybody doesn't want a liar. They don't want a cheater. They don't want this. They don't want that. That doesn't help you. You have to know, understand compatibility. Folks, if you're not familiar with my uh, relationship iceberg chart, excuse the glare, okay? Look, 
Attraction is above the waterline. That's chemistry. Compatibility is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. That's where compatibility lies. And many of you don't really understand the mechanics to compatibility. You don't understand how to, to determine compatibility. Remember I said earlier, dating is a process of getting to know someone. The only way you get to know them is give them a barrage of questions. So you can start, because look, when we're meeting total strangers, the only way we get to know someone is to interview them. Oh my God, Jonathan, every dating coach tells me not to interview people. No, quite the opposite. Your job is to, to determine who this person is, especially before you get physical. And men are driven by the biology. That's how we're driven. It's your job to be the gatekeeper of sex. Okay, the second thing a man says or does that might be using you. He doesn't open up to you. He doesn't open up emotionally to you. I know how many of you might have felt that in the early stage of dating, and he might open up on his problems with his past relationships or marriage. A man might talk to you about his past, especially if he was in a unhappy marriage or a miserable relationship, he might throw the other person under the bus. But that's not opening up to you. What opening up means is he actually expresses beyond the, oh my God, you're the most amazing woman on the planet and I'd like to marry you that he says on the first or second or third date. I'm talking about opening up to you about his feelings, about your relationship, and more importantly, opening up to gratitude about your relationship. That's right, gratitude is the key to real, is one of the keys to opening up emotionally with another person. And if he avoids it, or and if he avoids talking on the phone with you, if there's a bit of distance, you know, this happens with the, the guys that all they wanna do is text. Texting is the weakest form of communication. Texting is the weakest form of communication. Number three, he doesn't ask you about you after the hunt phase. Once he has conquered you, I, God, that sounds so, that sounds so, not cruel, but just, what's the word? I mean, it sounds toxic, okay? And he conquered you, but the whole men love the hunt and men love the chase. Well, what did they hunt and chase, ladies? Are they hunting around? I want a relationship. I want a relationship. Is that what they're hunting? Remember, they say, they can tell you they care about you. They can say they use you. They can, or excuse me, they care about you and demonstrate they care about you. But commitment is really caring about you. So, and beyond that is really getting to know you after you've had sex together. That's right asking deeper questions about you. Is he getting to know you? Your job is to get to know him. And remember I said my discovery call with me, my job is to teach you based on your personality, what questions you should be asking a guy to determine who he is. And quite frankly, he needs to be doing the same thing of you. And if he hasn't done this to really get to know you after the, the sex phase, he's probably gonna use you. He doesn't protect you. I don't mean he doesn't physically protect you. He doesn't emotionally protect you. If a man says he cares about you and won't commit, if a man is dating multiple people at the same time, this happens a lot. I, I know a lot of women who, men will start, they're sleeping with men. I mean, this has happened so frequently. The man will tell her about his other dating conquest because she's hoping she's gonna be the one picked. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many hundreds of times I've talked to women and they're hoping that they're going to be the one picked. I think it's because there's the fear. It's the fear. What did I write down here? The fear that there are so few choices when you think this person is really be you know unique amongst all other. They feel like if they stick it out long enough, they'll be the one to win. And let me tell you, neither women will win or the, of all the women he's sleeping with, and then he might end up choosing the woman that is most dysfunctional to him. If you're not familiar with the work of Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, Getting the Love You Want, why I'm recommending this book is because if you don't understand the Imago, why we choose partners the way we do. A lot of late ladies, look at. I know you found yourself in situations, you gave so much to the relationship, he ended it and he hooks up with the next woman he meets. 
Well, that's because that woman triggered all of his childhood wounds and he chose that woman over you because you weren't triggering his wounds. The fact is humans choose people oftentimes based on what's familiar from their childhood, what triggers our deep seated wounds of not feeling good enough, not feeling lovable, not feeling likable. And they choose the partner not the one that was the giver like you, but the, ch the partner who was rather a bitch, excuse my French. And I don't mean the bitch as in babe in total control of herself. I'm talking about the one who was really problematic. Men choose women of drama because he was raised with drama in his life. And by the way, if you're not feeling not good enough, not lovable, not likable, I highly recommend checking out my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Link below to get a copy of my book. He doesn't protect you emotionally. A real gentleman knows that if he's not going to go the distance with you, and remember I said earlier, men know rather quickly, a man who protects you emotionally will bow out of the relationship sooner rather than later. The men who are using you will stay in a relationship because it benefits his needs and not your needs. Number five, he, you'll never meet his friends or family. He always makes excuses about introducing you into his life. Your time together is very, you know, concentrated, maybe in your home, maybe in his home. You know, men will drive for sex. So just because he drove to you doesn't mean he actually cares about you. But if he doesn't invite you into his life, that's a good chance he's using you. Number six, he doesn't go out of his way for you. You might be sick. You know, it's interesting. I find so many women find themselves in these mediocre casual relationships and the minute they need to depend on the guy, he's nowhere to be found. Has this ever happened to you? If he's not there for you when you're, not, when you're sick or you need him, that's a good sign he's using you. And last but not least, and again, I, these aren't shocking. These are rather obvious. He, does, he puts off being exclusive and he avoids conversations about the future. Ladies, listen. Women who are in happy relationships, they never had to worry about this because the men clearly knew very early on they wanted to pursue a relationship and these men were intentional. It's all of you that are in casual relationships or relationships of ambig ambiguity that you have a greater chance of being you. So what's your power in all this? By the way, I swear, swear a little, you'll feel better. What's your power in all this? Your power is to establish your standards right from the get-go. If you don't know what your standards are, Reach out to me, I can help you with that. And number two, your job is to ask the questions very early on to weed out, be a detective to determine if he can meet your standards. And third, and most importantly, is you have to be the, you have to be a psychologist to determine, is this person emotionally mature enough to be in a relationship? Does he have relationship skills? If you're not familiar with my chart, here, where's this? My chart on emotional maturity and relationship skills. Roughly 20% of the population, by the way, this is not a fact, it's merely an opinion. 20% of the population has clinical issues. And while I say 20% are emotionally healthy and have good relationship skills, the vast majority of humans are dysfunctional. This is just an opinion I'm sharing with you. But you have a greater chance to meet an emotionally constipated man than a man who actually has the skills. And by the way, ladies, you are no picnic at this either. You know, let me give you an example how you all say, I, communication is so important and honesty is so important. And yet you are silent when it comes to speaking up. That's not honest with him. If you're not being honest is telling him, I don't feel good about these things. What are you going to do about it? In other words, tell him, look, I don't feel good about this dynamic. What are you going to do about it? And he will bail nine out of 10 times. It's better that he bailed sooner rather than later. Look at that woman I shared with you, three years driving to his place most of the time. The minute they moved in together, it was a disaster. 
the fact is, is we really don't know people in this long drawn out dating process. I'm listen, I'm a big proponent as you dive into the deep end, you figure it out quickly and see if you're a match with one another. This is why I talk about in my private coaching, radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect, laying your cards on the table and establishing the rules of engagement. And if you need some support with that, reach out to me. All right, I think you got the gist of the seven most shocking things men will say will do to use you. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. If this resonated with you, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And in the links below are copies to get all the things I recommend. All right, it's Q&A time. So it's time.